There's a lot of clowns on YouTube who use exuberance to emphatically present content or information that is incomplete, inaccurate, or outright misleading. Heck, maybe I'm even one of them. When they do this, I take offense because these people, that's right, I said these people, they pollute the actual valuable repository of knowledge that we have on YouTube as if they were turds in the water well. Today we're going to discuss SWR. And we're going to do that without misrepresenting something that we read or misunderstanding how to use test equipment to make certain measurements. The problem is when folks are new to the hobby, a foolish person can seem educated based off of their convictions. Don't fall for it. All right, let's start our conversation by asking what is SWR? SWR, or more correctly referred to as VSWR, voltage standing wave ratio, is a measurement of impedance match between a transmission line and a load in this case, an antenna. SWR is expressed as a ratio. For example, a 2 to 1 SWR is a 100 ohm to a 50 ohm match. We're going to get more in depth with that. Some things that impact SWR are antenna size. So antennas are designed for specific frequency, and their physical length is tuned to match that frequencies. So you have things like loose and bad connectors. Poor connectors or corroded connections between transmission lines and antennas can increase the impedance mismatch and lead to a high SWR. Bad or damaged transmission line if the transmission line, such as coaxial cable, is damaged or deteriorated. Another thing we need to consider is antenna location. The location and the height of the antenna can impact our SWR. An antenna installed too close to the ground, or too high in the air for that matter, or in an area where significant RF interference is, it can lead to higher SWR readings. So some folks say that SWR is a problem, and some folks say SWR isn't a problem. What I think I know is that standing waves can cause signal distortion due to variations in signal amplitude along a transmission line. So when we have this reflected power, it creates a standing wave on our transmission line. You get regions of high voltages and peaks, and then you also have regions of low voltages, we call those valleys, and they result in a non-uniform signal transmission, which causes distortion. This distortion can lead to signal degradation, and that's a problem. There's more to your transmission than just power. There's also signal quality. And oh, by the way, when you have SWR, you lose power. I want to take a moment to talk about resistance. And what resistance does, it limits the flow of current. And there is a byproduct to this process, and that is heat. Antennas and coaxial cable have ohmic resistance. And things that are along your transmission line, like tuners, balloons, and ununs, have this too. Now, I know there's somebody watching this video right now getting all fidgety because I keep talking about coaxial cable. And they don't use coaxial cable. They use parallel feeder, like ladder line or window line. And yes, it is true that ladder line and window line are almost lossless. And it's less of a problem when we talk about SWR and line loss. So good for them. It's awesome. I don't use it because it seems like it's more difficult, but that's probably just being a baby, and I should probably use it. So when power leaves your radio, some of it is lost to resistance, and some of it's reflected. When we measure SWR on an antenna, we are measuring impedance and not resistance. So let's talk about that. You're probably asking what makes up impedance. So let's talk about resonance. Resonance is when there is no reactance, which is almost never. Our impedance equals resistance plus reactance. There's a formula for that. Z representing impedance equals R representing resistance plus JX representing reactance. The reason that this is an issue is because we are operating at AC currents. When you talk about DC currents, you talk about resistance. But when you talk about AC currents and the variation in frequency, things become reactive, meaning they behave differently depending upon frequency. And that's the third bullet. So reactance plus either capacitive or inductive reactance. I think I said that wrong. Resistance plus capacitive or inductive reactance is our impedance. We measure capacitance by using farads, and we measure inductance by using Henry's. So let's talk a little bit about diagrams. Here we have a radio going to an SWR meter, and we are illustrating forward power and reflected power from our antenna. A 2 to 1 SWR is roughly 11.1% of our power being reflected. 
A transmitter that is operating at 100 watts into an antenna will only have 89% or 89 watts of its forward or incident power absorbed by the antenna. I think this is the point of debate. This is where we have something called line loss that we mentioned earlier comes into the equation. So what I want to mention is, is that some coaxial is more lossy than others. You pay a lot of money for less lossy cable. You have more loss the longer your cable is, and you have more loss the higher you go in frequency. So the same cable operating on 80 meters is going to be less lossy than the same cable operating on 20 meters. So let's take another look at the diagrams, and we're going to pretend that we have 1 dB of loss in our transmission line. So this means that our 100 watt transmission only delivers about 79 watts into the antenna. With a 2 to 1 SWR, only 70 watts is absorbed by the antenna. 9 watts is reflected, and what happens here, people say, well, it just gets reflected back down to your radio, to your tuner, whatever, and then is reflected right back. And that does happen, but when that 9 watts is reflected from the antenna back to the radio, it incurs that line loss again, and then we drop down to 8 watts return to the radio, and we rinse and repeat, and that power is continually reduced every time it goes back and forth and back and forth. And it also contributes to the problem of the standing wave on our transmission line. So no matter what somebody tells you that you don't have loss, you do, because you have loss in your transmission line as a result of the ohmic resistance that we discussed earlier. Now, somebody might be able to hook up a meter and misinterpret their results or play some trickery and explain to you that there's a myth with SWR and it's really not a problem, but they're wrong. And that's going to wrap it up. We laughed. We cried. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching. Totally appreciate it.